there are several examples of how we had to be creative and flexible in the development of the Vancouver Island uh, Marine Plan. And um, one example would be um, around the, the notion of um, protected areas, marine protected areas. Now, um, although that's, uh, that's something that we were uh, essentially required to consider in the development of our plan as an output, we, um, we knew we were going to have a bit of an issue with our, with our member First Nations, our seven member First Nations, because a number of those have had um, somewhat negative experiences with um, government in the past around establishment of, of uh, marine provincial parks. And um, so we knew that we were going to have a bit of a challenge if we, if we went and told our member nations that, hey, guess what, um, our plans are going to develop uh, marine protected areas. So um, we had to think about how we could essentially uh, make that notion more palatable with our nations. In terms of innovation, we, we came up with the idea of changing the name um, so that it didn't come across as if it was yet another government initiative to take away uh, responsibilities and, um, and interests that First Nations had. So, so instead of uh, a zoning uh, category called uh, marine protected areas, we, we convinced uh, the other folks in the, in the partnership, the Marine Planning Partnership, to come up with uh, a zone called um, protection management zone. So it, it perhaps is, a, is subtle, but it essentially um, was a way that we could go back to our member nations and say, look, we're not creating new marine parks. We're just um, identifying an area where protection of values and interests uh, is a management priority. And uh, part of the, the management priority is the, is, is the, the management of, of uh, values that First Nations have. That was important for our member nations because some of them think that there's other, there's other tools that we could use to, uh, to sort of legitimize an area as a protected area, that we don't necessarily always have to legislate it under government legislation, which then means there's a, a great number of limitations on First Nations and what they can do. So that was, that was one way that we were able to kind of get that across. And moving forward uh, in that area, we're, we're looking at different tools that we could be using to designate areas for protection that, that better reflect First Nations' interests in protection, that, and that they may, not they may not necessarily result in a federal or provincial legal designation.